I'll need to do what I tell you. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I just seem to be drawn to people that just do what I tell them. Any of y'all feel warm in your heart towards people that just do what you tell them to do? Anybody else or is it just me? Hmm? Right? One of my one of my goals, you know, is to literally help people come to the end of human love. Oh, I just I want to make it happen so bad. Hmm? Because human love is not their kind of love. And there is, when the cross is at work, I'm telling you, there is an unbelievable sifting and separating that starts happening. Hmm? The cross is like a sword. And when it starts to cut, it doesn't leave anything of man left standing. Hmm? And this is going to be the deliverance to the people of God in this hour of history that I'm telling you is about to produce sons who know the love of their father. And I'm telling you, they're going to be able to go anywhere at any time with anybody and do anything. Because they're not going to be thin-skinned. Y'all know what it means to be thin-skinned? It means you're offended like every five minutes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see, we've got to recognize by the revelation of Holy Spirit, this is why Oliva and I see our hearts. We're very knit together, right? Because we're teaching. And guess what we know? We know that it is not by our eloquence that you're going to get this. Just, just in case you were confused. Okay? It is not going to be by verbal eloquence that you get it. Hmm? It's going to be by the preaching of Christ and Him crucified. You got to give Holy Spirit something to wield when you speak. Hmm? That He begins to cut within you and begins to expose things to you that no human ever is what you ought to want. Because you see, how many of you are glad to know your IQ is not going to keep you from your death? Nobody else in here killed all your brain cells like I did drinking solid for 10 straight years. I got like three good brain cells left. Y'all know what I'm saying? And I'm using them right now. I mean, I am working those brain cells that I got left right now. Right? But how many of you know your IQ is not, not going to keep you from... Hmm? It's not up to us. It's up to Holy Spirit to do something so deep within us that no human will ever be able to take credit for it. Mm -hmm. Nobody in here is just going to wake up smart. Mm -hmm. We need Holy Spirit to reveal to us. We are speaking to who you are in spirit. We are completely dependent upon Holy Spirit to be working deep inside of you and revealing to you as the slow fire of God continues to work here at Cross Encounter. So this session, Do You Know Him Crucified, is causing the story to progress because we're about to see what God's solution is. What God's solution is. Remember I said last night that when God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, He was walking them up to a decision, right? And remember, God is walking you up to a decision. And God wants you to make an informed decision, not some emotional, impulsive decision that you can't remember what you said at church. Anybody in here ever done that? Anybody in here ever had a worship leader lead a song and you were singing and you're like, oh, I love the sound of that song? And you say all kinds of stuff at church. And every time the preacher says, is that right? You're like, yes, that's right. Amen. <laughs> they say, how many of you? And you're like, yeah, you know. And then they call you to the altar. And you're like, oh, it's so right. And you come up to the front. And you tell God all kinds of stuff. And then how many of you know you go to lunch? You go to lunch. And then you go home and take a nap. And then you wake up. And you cannot remember what you said at church. Oh, my God. Anybody? 
Anybody here just ever made vows to God, like, I swear, God, I'll never do that again? By the afternoon, you end it up to your earlobes. Anybody? Anybody? Hmm? <laughs> Thomas huh? But see, when you're in the slow fire of God, you're like, whoa, hold up. What did you just say? <laughs> and how many days are you giving me to think about this? About two. About two days I'm giving you. You'll understand, I'm like, hey, settle down. Stop being excited at church. Stop it. Cut it out. It's a demon of excitement. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> kind of, sort of. Right? Are y'all with me? You know, sometimes we just need to, like, uh, just turn off the smoke, people. Sorry, I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings right now. Me go. Turn off the smoke, my brother. Turn it off. Look at me. He's like, he's with me. He's <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying? Bring the lights up. Turn off the smoke. Come on. Y'all know? It's like just the lights are on full blast. And God is saying, do you want me and do you want your seat at this table? Hmm? This is, I'm telling you, he wants you. He's been talking about you since before the foundations of the world. The question now isn't, does God love me? The question is becoming is, shall I respond to him? Hmm? Not to his principles, to him. Hmm? So we've seen now, as we've been unfolding the story, we have seen that the core issue of man is not bad behavior and you didn't try hard enough, you didn't come from the right place. I mean, I mean you know, we all came in in the same condition. We've been trying to convince you of that uh, spiritually. Because <laughs> how many of you know, if it was just left up to me, I'd just jerk you up and snatch you ball headed. That's what my mama used to say. <laughs> don't wait, I'll snatch you ball headed. Anybody? We don't have anybody in here that's actually bald headed. I don't see anybody. But do y'all know what I'm saying? You almost grab you by your hair and almost have to report you missing. <laughs> anyway. See, because it's left up to me, I'm just gonna like knock all your heads together and let's get let's get oh. But how many of y'all know it doesn't work? <laughs> how many of y'all have ever just tried to get everybody to behave? Anybody in here ever misbehave trying to get your children to behave? <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. I have misbehaved so badly trying to get other people to behave. Right? Right? You understand? You see, God is coming to us. But God is coming and He's saying, look, I'm going to reveal myself to you. I want you to know that I've already taken care of everything. They said it, I told you last night in Genesis 3, they said, we're coming for our sons. Three times. The cross of Jesus. Now, if during this session, your flesh starts to fish, that's what we would call it. I know what I'm saying, that's what crawfish is. Your flesh will be like, uh, I think I'm just going to try harder. I think maybe I should fast. I think maybe I should start praying. I'm going to start committing myself to the church more. I think I'm going to work harder at church. I want you to understand that is not leading you. I want you to understand that good flesh with the cross begins to be. The flesh will start swearing. It will do everything. I'll be better, I'll be better, I'll be better. Mm -hmm. As Oliva well said, only the new man can come into agreement with God. Only the... Mm -hmm. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They are serving in our lives long before we ever even showed up. Some people are still wondering what's God going to do. A lot, of, a lot of Christians are getting bitter with God in this hour uh, because they still wait and thinking God hasn't done anything. Fiction that if one died, then all died. Listen carefully. And he died for that. Now what? You're 
looking at it on the screen. Do you understand? There's a reason why he did that he died for all so that all those who live might live no longer themselves, but to and for him. Plan A is still on. Plan A is still on. Jesus didn't Jesus came and accomplished everything that was necessary to bring you back to them and to restore you to the full he called you to before the of This is what it says. That he died for all who of God, my friends, death is always about life. Everything in God is leading you towards life with them. It's so that those who live, those who have been brought back to life, those who live might live no longer to and for themselves, but to and for Him who died and was raised again for Sometimes will say to me, well, you know, Nancy, I've just always had a heart for God. And I say, well, you're deceived. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, there are people that are living under the voodoo that actually believe that I've just always, I've just always loved God. I know, I'm sorry. You're deceived. That goes completely against the brain of the truth. Mm -hmm. Just like when we say things like, well, you know, I'm church having, you know, training greeters than we do And I love greeters, you know, I love them. That's what I'd be doing at church probably. It's good. Hmm? But how many of you know we've got to be about maturing the sons of God? We've got to be about this and what it is that they are doing. So it says that while we were in to God through the death, of his son. Oh, what a death. Therefore, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved, daily delivered from sin's life. So I want to talk to you in this session. I want to open up to you what his death has actually accomplished. And my prayer is, is you will literally embrace the full force of the cross of Jesus Christ to deal with everything that has come between you and Him. Everything. The very first thing that the Scripture tells us is in Hebrews, and you'll see these on the And someone's going to be, Candace, Sisters, which one would you like? Uh, I'll take all of the ocean. We have nothing else to do. Let's just take our time and bring me everything I paid for. People like me and see, I can't believe you embarrass yourself like that. Embarrass myself to me. Embarrassing to go on an all-inclusive vacation and act like you fasted. <laughs> embarrassing. Go on an all-inclusive Cruise, and then you're going to sit there and act like, well, I don't want to embarrass myself. I, I'm like, you know what? This is an attitude we have in the church. We have the all-inclusive victory of Jesus, and everybody comes like paupers and beggars, and like, well, I'll just have a little something. A little something? Yeah. I'm thinking, are you kidding yeah. me? We have the all-inclusive victory. Guess what I'm saying? Oh. What did he do? I need every single bit of it. I want it all. Do not withhold anything. Do you understand? Guess what would happen? The sons of God took hold of the all-inclusive victory of Jesus. We will be plump in our souls. We'll be plump in our souls. Fight in private. Single instant. Individual. Death has been tasted. Sin has been 
Jesus, who was ranked lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor because of his having suffered death, in order that as sinners he might experience death for every individual person. Do you know him crucified? He has tasted your death. Listen to me carefully. Jesus did not just die for you. Jesus died as you. Nobody knows the trouble that you've seen. Jesus has become death. He drank that death. He knows like no one else. He knows what we have actually this is why when Olivia and she mentioned that we have a deep need for pity. Hmm? Anybody here going to admit that you have a big, big need for pity? I know y'all are looking at me like, no, I do not. Hmm? Yes, you do. <laughs> because the Bible says that God has had love, pity, and mercy upon you. And if he's got it, my friends, you need it. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of self-pity? Mm -hmm. That's the need. And you take it to self. And self says, that's right. Nobody understands you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's had it quite like you. Nobody really understands all the hell you had to put. Y'all know that little whispering thing? Or you take your need for pity to everybody else. And how many of you know people see you coming and they go the other way? I mean, uh, they like they're scared to death to ask you how you're doing because you're gonna tell them. Well, it's just, it's just. just. <laughs> Y'all can see I've had a little practice. <laughs> Y'all see, I know how to do this. You know, I didn't read this in a book. You know, I knew I know how to do it. Right? Y'all know how it is. You walk into a room. What do you say? Nothing. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> right? My husband used to say, uh, Nancy, do you have emphysema? <laughs> we need to get you an oxygen tent. Gosh, anybody know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's the matter, Nancy? Nothing, nothing, nothing's wrong. <laughs> I love it when we do this on Facebook. All they post on Facebook is, I can't believe <laughs> What does everybody ask? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? I'm like, I ain't doing it. I ain't. Doing it, you can't make me. <laughs> right? How many of y'all know what I'm saying? What happened? Why don't you just tell me what happened? No. What are you doing? I want somebody. Oh, just ask me at least 12 times. Ask me 12 times. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Was it this? Was it this? Was it this? They're sitting on the other end of the screen, loving it. Y'all do know there's people on the other side of the screen. Y'all know that. <laughs> right? They're probably cooking dinner, you know, drinking in the kitchen. What are they doing? Posting emotionally manipulative things online. Why? Because they're milking you like a cow. Picture. That's a cow. And I has tasted death for me. And I have seen it by the revelation of Holy Spirit. And I've decided it's going to be enough for me. I don't need another human being. I go knocking on everybody's door like, have you heard my story? Have you heard my story? I'm like, I don't need to tell my story. I told my story to Jesus. And guess what he told me? I know. He says, I know it has ever been done to you. I want you to drink deep of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because I'm telling you this, you're not going to have to pretend after the cross. Because your need has been met by him.
him. Oh, number two, and he knows that it's been brought to nothing. But when we still think we have to earn a victory rather than victory that is ours, we live crippled and halt and lame. And we can't run and scale a wall and take a city and do the things that God has given us to do with him. The devil has been brought to nothing. Since the Therefore, these his children share in flesh and blood and the physical nature of human beings. He himself, in similar manner, partook of the same nature that by going through death, oh Jesus. Jesus did not escape death, my friends. He went through it. And he did not flinch when he looked into the face of death. Because he knew. Hey, I don't scare the devil. Y'all know you don't scare the devil. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you scare the devil. And you so anointed that the devil's no, please. Please. But the moment you step into the finished work of Jesus on the cross, and you say, I trust in nothing but what Jesus has done, you better know hell will have to back up. Because now you done gone and believed. I could use this one, but if you've got one, that's okay. You know I can talk till you get back. You know what I'm saying? I got something to say. You know, so it's a family meeting, okay? So, right? But I want you to understand that when he put down, he put down of his life, the one who would always try, the one who loves to show God how good He's doing. I wanted to come before the table and say, look, God, look how good I'm doing. But you understand from God's point of view, he's like, well, that doesn't get you a seat at the table. We want you at the table. All right. So I want you to think about the old man. Okay, I'm just I'm trying to repeat my 